I started my business, I was probably about 21 or 22. I had just graduated nursing school and I would say about halfway through nursing school I kind of hit a brick wall, like emotionally realized that this wasn't going to be for me ultimately. I still cared very much, I still wanted to go through with it, I still wanted to be a contributing member of society, but it wasn't fulfilling me the way that I had hoped it would. I always had a passion for making clothes, so from the time I was like 13, 14, I was experimenting in ways with like mildly altering clothes. So I started really getting into it by um, thrifting and tailoring clothes. I actually called myself thrifted and tailored at that point. It was like my business name in the gypsy way was the slogan. I did things really unconventionally, so kind of backwards to like what most people, how most people go through life. Like you go to college, you meet someone, get married, buy a house, kind of sequential. Everything was backwards for me. I was sitting in a classroom 10 days after I had given birth. <laughs> I was 18 years old going on 19. Um, my baby was at home with my mom and it was really painful to leave him that day. I introduced myself as a new mom and one of the ladies in the class said, what are you doing here? <laughs> Go home and be with your baby, quit school off. But for me, I knew that wasn't, that wasn't what I wanted. I wanted to get through school. I wanted to be a nurse and finish it so that I didn't have to rely on anybody. And that was important. And I think I gained a lot of respect for it. Getting pregnant at 18 isn't exactly, you know, people aren't cheering you on for it. They tend to have a negative idea in their mind of what it means to be a young single mom. And I had a lot to prove. I ended up getting into nursing school as planned and I graduated when I was 20 years old. So getting through nursing school was definitely a seriously huge challenge and um, finishing was a huge accomplishment, but then you have the whole new accomplishment of actually starting your nursing career and most people in nursing know that they don't go easy on you. So it was, it was a lot, I was unhappy. I knew I wasn't, I wanted to do something else. So I kind of got back into my fashion and stuff and I started cutting up clothes and making new things and getting excited about it, like really excited about it. The energy was so high when I was doing what I loved. And Instagram has been very good to me. So when I was posting things, I started getting an overwhelming amount of attention. People, like the energy that I was putting into it, I was getting back. And it was a really exciting time because I was experiencing a lot of like breakthroughs. So thrifted and tailored became just the gypsy way because I started cutting clothes from straight fabric instead of thrifting and tailoring things. I just think there's so much art to it and being able to just experiment with yourself and being alone and just spending hours on your craft, it was really all organic self-teaching. And I used to be a little self-conscious about it, like thinking like, oh, well, I don't have that formal teaching, so maybe it's not, but I've actually grown a great sense of confidence in it because I think like when I'm laying out those patterns and like figuring out what works for like what looks best on different body types and all that, I don't think I would have gotten that from from that formal education. That like, you know, that experience of just trial and error. As far as freehanding patterns, like making my own patterns, sometimes I don't even pull my measuring tape out, which would, which would be really frowned upon by a teacher in fashion school. That's how I got where I where I am and I, I can freehand patterns and have something in my head now and just be able to make it. My favorite thing that people say is like, I can't believe you can do that. I, I can't even sew a button on a shirt. And in my head I'm thinking like, there was a time that I couldn't sew a button on a shirt. But here we are. So this is my third bedroom. Now it's sort of like a dressing room. My clients can come by and try out their pieces here. They can shop a little bit from my one-offs or get measured and have a consultation. So all of my swimwear is custom to size, so each one is made specifically for the, per the person that's ordering it. So bust, waist, hip is what I ask for. Um, I do sell them in small, medium, and large because some girls are comfortable ordering that way. But, um, but I, like, I like to make them custom so that they can feel like they're having a perfect fit.
This is my studio. This is kind of where all the magic happens. Um, I spent a lot of my life down here and uh, it was um, an unfinished basement prior and I always dreamed of making this like my studio and now it is. This is my happy place. So Shannon also has her own swimwear line. She came to me with prior experience with making bikinis which is why I have so much faith and trust in her. Um, it was really hard for me to give up these tasks but she's awesome at it. You know, delegating is so important. One of the biggest mistakes I've made is thinking that I can do everything myself, not do everything yourself. So today I'm going to show you how to make a bow bandeau. Back in my early 20s when I first started getting into all this stuff, I was actually very uncomfortable with being called a fashion designer. A lot of people were like, oh, you're, you're a fashion designer, and I was like, no, I'm a girl that makes clothes. So I was very uncomfortable with that label. and. Now that I've been doing it for, you know, five or six years and actually getting paid to do it, it's kind of a no-brainer, so I kind of started getting comfortable with that label. I think we're so obsessed with timelines that, like, a lot of people don't end up doing what they really want to do or what they're supposed to do because they're worrying too much about how maybe I'm too old to do it or maybe I'm too young to do it. Staying present and just doing what you want to do at any given moment to get yourself to the next level is so important. I think it's really important to spend time with yourself and try and ease your own mind because sometimes we're just like playing the same tapes over and over again and clearing your mind. A lot of times creative thoughts and realizations about yourself are bred through not thinking and just spending time in peace. So me and my son recently have been going on these little like gratitude walks we take a walk and we talk about five things that we're grateful for and they tell you that in psychology books that that can change your life being more grateful just listing three to five things that you're grateful for every day can have a profound impact on your brain make you happier make you more grounded more positive his attitude towards life like his naturally happy nature and like comedic relief every day is what inspires me um, also, children have this way of like keeping things so simplistic. So like when we go through our lives and we're kind of tainted with our experiences, children have this innocent nature that kind of brings you back and like grounds you, which is a really beautiful thing. I can't say enough good things about him. I still look at him and wonder how he's mine. <laughs> People measure success in different ways. And as corny as this might sound, my son recently has been saying, proclaiming that he loves his life and to me it's like I made it like having him feel like we you know Having him feel like he loves his life is an accomplishment